Hey there, my name is Stacey Sims. I'm the host of Diabetes Connections, a weekly podcast for and about people with type 1 diabetes, and I'm the author of The World's Worst Diabetes Mom. I want to take a minute to talk to you. It's still Diabetes Awareness Month, and if you are not touched by diabetes, it's really important that you watch and listen to this video. I am talking to you. I'm not talking to my usual diabetes audience because knowing the signs of diabetes can save you a lot of stress, a lot of trouble, and could even save your life or the life of somebody that you love. So please stay with me for just a couple of minutes as we go through some really basic stuff that hopefully you'll never have to use or know, but really could make a very big difference. And let's start by talking about the signs of diabetes. This is my favorite way to explain this. This is a campaign that was originally put out by Diabetes UK, and I think it makes it so simple. It is the four T's of type 1 diabetes. Toilet, thirsty, tired, thinner. Doesn't get any more simple than that. These are classic signs of diabetes. And if you are experiencing them in this way, then you really need to see your doctor get a blood sugar or a urine test ASAP. Don't fool around with this stuff. If you are peeing like never before, if you are drinking more than ever before, this isn't just, oh, I'm hot and my child's an athlete, you know, needs to drink a little bit more. My son was diagnosed right before he turned two and he would have one of those sippy cups, which is what, 10, 12 ounces of water. He would slam one down and want another one immediately. Very tired and unintended weight loss big signs of type 1 diabetes. I don't know why this isn't talked about more. Maybe we just don't like to say toilet in this country, but the four T's of type 1 diabetes are a really easy way to remember this. Why is it so important to know the signs? Well, every year during cold and flu season, and now with COVID, we don't know what's going to happen in terms of misidentifying the signs of type 1. So many children and adults come in with these symptoms and they are told it's just a cold, maybe it's the flu, they're growing, they're more tired. It can be deadly to miss these signs. So to tell us more about this, I'm really excited that I was able to talk to Dr. Jason Fischel. He is with Atrium Health. He is with their Mecklenburg Medical Group. He's a family physician. And he took, it's just a few minutes. I hope you will listen all the way through though. And he starts out by talking about how it really can happen at any age. Type 1 diabetes is not just something that happens to little kids. Well, that's right. You know, type 1 absolutely can happen in any age and I've definitely seen diagnoses in in essentially infants but then also in people in their even 30s 40s you can have late onset type 1 diabetes and really it's an interesting condition because it can present quickly or it can present slowly so obviously you had mentioned you know if you're feeling sick there are definitely people who it's almost like a it's like a thunderstorm you know um, but then it can also present really slowly and insidiously because at the end of the day, as I know you know, and I think some of our listeners probably know, um, the real determining factor for how you're going to present is the speed with which your body is harming the cells in your pancreas that are making that are responsible for making your insulin. So if it does that slowly over time, it might just be something as simple as, I know something is wrong, I'm not feeling right, but I can't put my finger on it. And that's that's obviously where your pediatrician or family physician or internist or endocrinologist can help you put your finger on it. So many cases of type 1 diabetes are missed to the point where something like 30 to 40 percent of all people who are diagnosed with type 1 are diagnosed while they're in DKA, which is, as you know, but as you listed, it's diabetic ketoacidosis, which in layman's terms, very dangerous state where you are you are close to death. It can be fatal. Uh, Dr. Fischel, why do you think that it gets that bad when it really is a simple blood test or a urine test to, to get this diagnosis? It's a, it's a great question, and it's a great point because – both type 1 diabetes and DKA are really non-controversial diagnoses. I, I completely agree with you. I mean, there are always going to be strange cases, but fundamentally, these are things with clear numerical cutoffs. These are things where the testing is minimally invasive. I mean, obviously, anytime we're doing a blood test on a kiddo, that's a little invasive, but uh, you know, it's not it's not a procedure or surgery or anything like that. Right. Um, 
And so I think that what I would stress is even though, like you said, the symptoms are kind of cardinal, they're, they're, they're clear, they're, they are absolutely in the media. And I just as frequently have a patient come to me concerned about diabetes as I might myself raise the concern. Mm. Um, it can be insidious. And a lot of times what we you know, may have, you know, may start in a rather insidious way with slow weight loss or, you know, maybe there's some other health things going on that are clouding the picture. Um, maybe the physician level of concern is not high enough and, and they're thinking, well, you know, okay, the, the weight we might have, you know, see a two year old that we saw at 18 months and their weight's not down. They may have like crossed up percentile line on the growth chart. It's like, eh, you know, maybe we just watch this check in a few months. Um, so in those early phases, you know, type one diabetes can resemble a lot of different things. And I think we're often reluctant to run even minimally invasive tests on our children. Um, but the point that, uh, you know, that I would raise is that the presentation of DKA, what makes it so challenging is that it presents quickly because it's usually triggered by something else. So generally speaking, in the process of developing type 1 diabetes, what may start slow and progressive in terms of actual damage to the pancreatic islet cells can then be really significantly accelerated from a metabolic perspective by even something as simple as like a cold or a urinary tract infection mm. or a flu and anything that's causing significant inflammation in the body can all of a sudden very rapidly tip the scales and lead to that presentation of DKA. You're right. I mean, the numbers that you said are strike. I mean, it's all, you know, it's almost half of cases yeah. present in DKA and that's, and that's, I, I don't, I don't see any data that that's necessarily improving. You know, in this year, especially, I know people who are worried, concerned about going to a doctor's appointment who, with COVID, you know, don't want to leave the house if they don't have to. And we're hearing, you know, anecdotally, I don't have any statistics, but I, I do run a local Facebook group for parents of kids with type 1. And we're hearing anecdotally about he was kind of sick, but I thought it was the flu or I, I didn't want to go in or I was really concerned. And some of these families are being diagnosed later than they otherwise might have. Is this a concern? I, I've got to believe this is a concern that you have with more than just type one this year. It's a concern. It's a concern that we're doing what we can to address in the medical field. That would include things like, obviously, um, probably many of you places where you work, you have, you may have things like this too, where there's different protocols for being sick. There might be people checking temperatures, there might be symptom reports if your kids happen to be going back to school. I know a lot of schools are doing that kind of process. And we're doing the same sort of thing in the medical office. If you're not sure whether you need to go in, that's something that your provider can help you navigate as well. It's just like, okay, is there a different way to address this? And there often is these days. You know, um, Telemedicine has been hanging around for a while, but as you guys probably can imagine, has grown by leaps and bounds over the past <laughs> seven months. Um, and it's really been operationalized and kind of hit prime time, um, which fortunately the infrastructure was there and I think it was always um, ready. But now the the acceptance of telehealth by the population is so so much broader and wider than it had ever been before. So there are many, many concerns where an initial assessment to help triage your case and understand what's going on with you and with your family can often be done over the phone or over a virtual chat platform. And then, yeah, you know, like if you are telling me about symptoms on the phone and I'm like, okay, well, that could be concerning for T1D. Um, what, what do I need to do about that? Sometimes you can, you know, you can come in, do like a quick, like, you know, pop in, lab check, pop out and really limit your exposure that way as well. Um, so that the bulk of the exposure is just coming in, dropping off a urine sample or something simpler yeah. like that than spending a long amount of time in the waiting room or spending a long amount of time actually um, you know, waiting in the physical space to see your doctor. Let's throw up that graphic one more time, the four T's of type 1 diabetes. I really hope this never happens to you. It is certainly no fun, but no one with any type of diabetes wants it or deserves it. 
that's another topic for another time. But as we head into these winter months when we are all very rightfully concerned about COVID, I just thank you for taking the time to look at this, to think about it, to mention it. If any of your friends talk about having these signs and thinking, well, maybe it's cold flu, boy, this test is so simple. As Dr. Fischel said, sometimes they just don't run the tests for many reasons. So please ask, get pushy if you have to. And thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video and listen to this advice. I'm Stacey Sims. I'm the host of Diabetes Connections, a weekly podcast for and about people with type 1 diabetes. Thanks so much for taking the time to give this your attention, to watch and listen to this information. I am not exaggerating when I say it could save a life. Thank you.